And, you know, we had an article that was linked all over the web uh, just on uh, Monday. Pollsters, Americans are pre-revolutionary. And so the system all over the world is letting these out-of-control welfare riots, iPod riots happen, ahead of putting in draconian rules against everybody. And I've predicted this ad nauseum like a broken record. Uh, and Rasmussen is finding the U.S. is pre-revolutionary. I just hope that, that, that the revolution isn't targeting uh, shoe stores. Uh, because, uh, and, and of course, I really don't want to have things be violent. But, uh, I mean, if they are going to be violent, um, this isn't going to hurt the establishment to, uh, to uh, have uh, family dwellings being burned and women jumping out of them or people being, being carjacked. Uh, which we've confirmed from reporters that have witnessed it, and it's been videotaped on the ground. But joining us is reporter uh, for, I don't know, RT, Greek TV, British TV, uh, talk show host, you name it, needs no uh, introduction, Max Kaiser of the Kaiser Report. And uh, Max, what's your uh, view on this? Is this thuggery or glorious revolution? Well, I mean, I see a connection, obviously, with um, what, what I've been calling the global insurrection against banker occupation. Uh, every city in different countries are, is going through this in different ways. So London is going through it differently than Athens or Tunis or Madrid or Dublin or, or even Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, but uh, when you have a society that valorizes looting, and this is covered actually in a book by Frederick Bastiat in 1850, who said, this was a post-French Revolution, he explained that when the privileged classes use the government for legalized plunder, that you encourage the lower classes to revolt using plunder. So what's happening in London is, on one hand, they're plundering, or you could say they're trying to get a job at Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, because they are mimicking their overlords. They are mimicking what they see happening in their society. Why, why isn't Jamie Dimon, and why, isn't, uh, why aren't they down there trying to recruit these kids to be part of their bank? Because they're, they're, they're setting the example. Okay, well, Max, hold on a second. I thought I was going to disagree with you, but I actually totally agree. When you send us an email saying, hey, Alex, you don't quite get it, I, you know, I, uh, now I do actually get it. And, and you're absolutely right. When we have giant prison populations and young people are thrown into them for almost no reason, they, it, they become part of the criminal culture and they see that the mega banks don't get in trouble. Uh, they see that there's no rule of law. Uh, they see that uh, the Formula One owner all over the world gets his racetracks paid for with taxpayer money, not just tax incentives, but actually gets paid. When they see his daughter getting $4 billion gift from him, uh, when they see trillions being stolen, when, when they see uh, all of this happening, uh, then they say, hey, uh, this is a criminal society, let's go for it. So, so if you're saying it from that perspective, I do agree with you. My only issue is they're going to use this now to further clamp down on everybody in England uh, by the police standing down. That's coming anyway, that because, um, because of this tension that's going on, this war, the war that I see, and I've been talking about it for 10 years, is be between the speculators who want interest rates at zero and people who have jobs or want to save money who want interest rates higher. Now, what did Ben Bernanke just say? He said he's going to keep interest rates near zero for another two years. This is plunder. This is unconscionable. This is causing enormous financial dislocation. It's a form of financial oppression, and I would go so far as to call it financial apartheid, because in America, if you're part of the underclass, for example, they use interest rates to, to create the new Jim Crow laws or financial apartheid. If you're part of the elite, you get to borrow money at negative 2%. If you're borrowing money in a credit card, or a payday loan, you're borrowing money at 35 or 40 percent or higher, guaranteed to impoverish you. So they use interest rates like they used to use those Jim Crow laws. Or as you see in South Africa during the apartheid regime, they're creating through financial apartheid a permanent underclass. And keeping interest rates at zero percent is key. The Bernanke, see these riots are horrible, of course, but let's not forget Bernanke and, and uh, Mervyn King, who's over there at the Bank of England, those guys are the master plunderers that these kids are mimicking. And they are getting away with incredible fraud and confiscation of wealth and plunder. And, and this is really what needs to be focused on. And if you say 
to me, well, they're going to use this to clamp down and bring in more um, police state, et cetera. That train is in, that, that train has left the station, Alex. No, nothing is going to stop that. Uh, and so you've got these uh, uprisings. Max, I agree countries. with you, but, but, but if, uh, let me tell you, you're not going to see stuff like that here in Austin, Texas, uh, because the people have a right and a duty to defend themselves. It can only happen in the New Yorks, the Chicago's, the England's, where the people have been disarmed. But I agree with you, Max. I think this overall is a diversion. And uh, if these young people would have tried to attack the big mega banks, if they would have tried to go into parliament or into the royal palaces, then they would have been met with uh, not rubber bullets, but with leaden full metal jacket bullets instantly. So, so that's all you need to know right there is that they've been allowed to do this because the social engineers think they're going to get uh, major power uh, out of it. But let's look at what's happening to the global markets. Uh, when you are breaking down the interest rates, uh, obviously that signifies they're going to continue to, de to devalue the dollar. We saw over the weekend uh, Greenspan tell Meet the Prostitutes on Meet the Press uh, that indeed uh, they'll just print money to pay off the debt. Well, that signifies hyperinflation. So where are we going, uh, Max Kaiser, uh, from your research? I mean, is the acceleration towards worldwide financial collapse uh, accelerating or, or where are we on the chart? I'll tell you where exactly we're going. We're going toward something called negative interest rates. Uh, the Swiss are now charging people to keep money at their bank. And a bank in America is now charging their highest uh, deposit uh, customers a, a charge of keeping cash at the bank, which is a negative interest rate. So if you keep your money at the bank at the end of the year, you're going to have 1% or 2% less of it. The bank is just going to take it from you. And they'll say that the reason they're doing this is you need to put your money into the stock market to get this economy going. And again, that's a form of financial oppression uh, or financial apartheid. And let me add to this. Federal courts have now ruled even $1,000 at your home with a bank receipt can be confiscated. So you keep it here, we take it. Uh, and if you keep it at home, we take it. I mean, this is incredibly lawless, and it's all designed while they're stealing your money via inflation uh, on top of it. I mean, th this is absolute war against everyone but the big six mega banks uh, who literally get the tens of trillions of taxpayer bailout money to themselves and then hoard it. I mean, this is an economic global takeover. How do we counter them, Max? writing on the wall, the people on your show, Gerald Salente, um, Peter Schiff, Mark Fauber, Max Kaiser, get on the list. What have we been saying? Gold is the only non-corruptible form of money, and of course it's breaking out, hitting new all-time highs as we speak, and that is going to continue. It's actually melting up at this point, because the realization that these types of uprisings that you're seeing around the world, including London, they're just going to spread, and they're just going to keep getting more and more out of control. I mean, you can't, once the genie's out of the bottle, you can't go back and say, well, your, your uprisings are in London. We'd like you to wear a different color. We'd like you to rearrange the furniture. And can you do it? Can you quiet down a little bit because you're disturbing the peace? I mean, once the genie's out of the bottle, you don't know how it's going to manifest in different cultures. You say it's not going to happen in the United States like it's happening in London. That's correct. But it will happen. Then it's going to happen in a different way, just like it's happened differently in all these other countries. But it's a global insurrection. They're part of that global insurrection. I know that um, in the UK and the BBC and these other UK press outlets, that they are loath to refer to it as having any political component whatsoever. But that is to be blind to what's happening around the world as this elite banking cartel it confiscates wealth and brings about this financial apartheid in a permanent underclass. And this, it's, it's causing these this, this, these, up, these uprisings everywhere. This is just another chapter, another example of something that's been in place now for the last three years. And it's only going to grow. How, you know, in Madison, Wisconsin, they had a bit of an uprising, very peaceful. They tried to kick out Scott Walker, who was imposing financial apartheid. Uh, they failed. Uh, so, but it'll pop up somewhere else. And what form it takes, we don't quite know yet. But it will happen in some form. Uh, the revolution in Egypt is ongoing. Uh, the revolution in Tunisia is ongoing. The people in uh, 
Dublin uh, have yet to show their true hand, how they're going to deal with their financial oppression. The people in Greece, the same thing. But this is all, we're all together now because the global banking cartel has instituted negative interest rates, which means that you will never, ever accumulate any wealth whatsoever, and they've legalized confiscation of wealth. They've completely legalized plunder. So when you look at kids plundering in London, and they're saying, oh, my God, look at these kids. Yeah, it's terrible. But what about Goldman Sachs? What about J.P. Morgan? They do it on a No, I hear you, Max. It's, it's, uh, your audio is kind of degenerating. Are you on a speakerphone? No, I'm not. I'm on my landline. Uh, I don't know why it's degenerating. I don't know. Does it sound any better? Uh, are you on a headset? No. It's just kind of. Try back on this line or my cell phone? No, it's just kind of watery. We'll we'll call the cell phone during the break. I, I just really want to hear what you have to say. Uh, well, well, Max, where does it go? Because the banks give themselves trillions in interest free or negative money. Then, for everybody who isn't being given the free money, it destroys those of us uh, that work for it. They've obviously premeditatedly done this. They built a giant uh, police state. Uh, in place to protect this conversion from a free market society to a crony uh, insider uh, monopoly system. Uh, and they're getting ready their new wars. Uh, what do you make of S&P, who certified all the derivatives garbage for the banks knowingly, paid by them, coming in and uh, getting rid of the AAA rating of the U.S., the states now having their ratings lowered, the counties, the cities, uh, all to the very zombie banks. Our ratings are cut to them who are the most insolvent, most fraudulent out there as the only sector in the economy uh, that's doing well is the insiders, the General Electrics uh, who are exempt from the laws they get passed, the mega banks who are exempt from the laws they get passed. I mean, how long can this go on? Or is it too sophisticated for the fluoride head population? Are we doomed? Look, Wall Street is always looking for new sources of revenue. Okay, we understand that. They created subprime, which is toxic waste uh, paper to make oodles of money off of fraud. And then they blew that market up. They're always looking for new ways. What they figured out is that the U.S. Treasury bond market, which is triple A, is huge. But you can't make a lot of money on it because it's triple A. And the spreads and the liquidity and the volatility is very low. So by S&P lowering the rating of the U.S. Treasury bond, you now have volatility and these increased spreads. This is great for Wall Street because they make money on the chaos and the confusion. And that rate will continue to go down because as it goes down, it creates huge amounts of volatility in trading and commissions for Wall Street. This is another avenue for Wall Street to create huge amounts of revenue and bonuses by trashing the uh, U.S. AAA rating and, and moving it down to a lesser rating, which means it'll become like a junk bond. So it's constantly up and down. You see the volatility in the last three days as a result. This is exactly what I said would happen, that volatility would increase. And, this and is that's exactly because the saying. insiders... It's huge, too. 300, 400 point days. Yeah. Who do you think makes money with that? Wall Street. Why do you think they lowered the rating? To make chaos and trading profits. It's their new source of revenues. Well, that's it. And plus, they're the insiders. It's come out reportedly that somebody made an $80 million bet that's made them 10 billion dollars somebody knew that the debt rating was going to be lowered a month ago and the daily mail and others think it's lord soros uh, but the point is imagine for all these big insiders who have all the insider information on the schizophrenic helter skelter rising and falling uh, that we've seen uh, on the stock markets in the last few days uh, just imagine the wealth that they're creating uh, in this process of command destruction. Now, now, Max, uh, hopefully we can keep you a, a little bit in the next hour. We're going to try your cell phone back here in just a moment. I know you're over in France, so uh, sometimes the connections aren't that good. But I promise to get to Tony O, Steve, Patrick, Matthew, and others from England to get their views on the riots and what's happening there. Uh, but just like Katrina, folks, they didn't come for five, six days to help with water and food. They left folks in the Superdome. They went to the richest areas, to basically loot the homes, steal the firearms. The government did. And so know this, the government is works for the bankers. They are not going to help you. So get your gold, get your guns, get your silver. Look, I understand Max's frustration. I've got it. I'm going to be honest with you. I am beside myself with anger right now.
because everything we predicted is happening. I'm very upset gold hit $1,800 today. I'm very upset they announced they're going to keep interest rates uh, at zero, which means negative for the big banks. That means total de dollar devaluation. I mean, this country is going to be a hellhole. This is all by design. And, 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 and I know Max is trying to stop it. I'm trying to stop it. And, and I, I even get Max's point, even if they're burning down houses and stuff, and they are thugs, at least they're doing something. I mean, when you're, when, when you're at least the action shows there's some life left there and that people are angry and maybe it'll lead to something. I mean, I get it. I just see the government manipulating it, disarming the public to allow this to happen. And it just shows me how diabolical it is to have social engineers running things. And it's so sophisticated that, and it's also so simple at the same time. How do you get the, the general public to figure this out? Now, I haven't asked if Max can stay a little bit into the next hour because I want to get more into the economy with him and all his predictions that unfortunately have come uh, true, almost every one of them, and where things are going and how folks can protect themselves. But I'd, I've got to get to Tony O, Steve, Patrick, and Matthew from the UK. They've been holding for about 30, 40 minutes. Uh, Kaiser, will you hold 15, 20 minutes with us into the next hour? Okay. Okay, fantastic. Let's go to Tony O in England, uh, back to the uh, riots. What's your view on what's happening over there? Hi, Alex. Yes, um, well, it's not revolution. It might have started off as a possible beginning of revolution. But the police, as you know, have operated a stand-down operation. Uh, basically, it's turned into opportunistic criminality and violence. But the powers that be will not let this opportunity go to waste. And on Thursday, we will see, as a good word you use, more draconian laws and a complete evisceration of what rights we think we have left after our terrorist act one and two, your equivalent of the Patriot Act one and two were put in place. It's going downhill rapidly, Alex. Yeah, I've seen the video of them dragging folks out of cars, burning down houses. At every instinctive level, I want to go get in the street and attack those people. And then I hear folks saying, well, that's vigilantism. When the police don't protect you, it's not bad to instinctively, when marauding men are running around burning things and attacking people, to want to attack them. And, and, and I'm not taking sides here. The, 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 the social engineers have been caught now allowing this to get out of control. And again, I, I want to ask the question, why aren't the looters going after the government? Because if they go after government buildings, they're going to get shot, deader than a hammer. Uh, any, anything else you want to add, Tonio? Very eloquent. Yeah, just, just one more point. Um, this is the opportunity to show the world what the word anarchy really means. Society standing together for each other. Uh, but one final point why you've got Max on. Could Max please enlighten me why silver hasn't moved in relation to gold? recently. Max? No. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, these two have been moving uh, in relation to each other for 10 years. They've been both averaging between 21 and 22 percent gains per year for 10 years. Uh, silver is up over 30 percent this year. Gold is up again this year. There is a, a relationship. It's going back for 10 years. If you look at any one or two month period of time, uh, you can see a divergence, but of course that would be foolish. You need to look at it at least over a one-year period of time, and this is kind of the short-sightedness that we see operating yeah. in these uh, riots in London, because people are looking at this, what happened in one night or two night, and drawing conclusions from it, and they're failing to look at the historical and global context. Okay, stay so there. I'm Max, you're... Max. I'm trying to bring in some context here of an historic and global nature. No, stay there. I, we got to go to break, but I agree with you. Now that I see your perspective, and yes, to the caller, you're looking at a snapshot of gold and silver, not a 10-year or one-year grant. Com is our guest for another 30 minutes. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. I want to hold Max over, and he's agreed to, to, to really detail what's happening in the command destruction, global banker occupation, and the resistance to it. I want to get into why zero interest rates or negative interest rates are so destructive. And I also want to get into his future perspective on the economy. I agree with him. There is world revolution. And a lot of times you'll see it uh, you know, the first tremors of it with the under disadvantaged class that will strike out in uh, ways that are that are counterproductive. But he's saying it's an indicator of things to come. And I agree with him on that. So we'll be looking at that 
uh, coming up after I get to Steve, Patrick, Matthew, and others. Uh, Steve in the UK, then Patrick and Matthew. Steve, what's your view uh, on what's happening over in the UK now into day four? Oh, hi, Alex. Hi, Max. Um, I just want to get the point across that this is not global insurrection against bank and occupation. These guys who are doing the looting, are doing the thieving, are playing thugs. That's all they are, Alex, the thugs. What, what they're doing is the government are front-running this, this violence, like they front-run the, the stocks, like they front-run front everything else. They're front-loading, exactly, as I said. They are allowing this to happen. They could trigger it any time. They control the gang member leaders, just like the ATF controls the cocaine and guns. They've been caught publicly. They allow it to happen, front-running, knowing resistance coming. Now they've branded it as thugs with pants down around their knees, burning family shops so they can then pass the laws Thursday to then attack people that actually insurrect against the austerity. Absolutely right. You said it so simply. Anything else? Well, it only, only is, Alex. Uh, I mean, I slightly agree with Max because people are feeling it, Alex. People are really feeling the austerity. But I think Max is, being, is giving them far too much credibility. I spoke to these people on the street. They don't know. They don't know the, the, in, the, they don't know the, the intricacies of, of the banks, what the banks are doing. All they can see is they're paying more, they're getting less money, and, and basically they're getting screwed. And that's what they're fighting against. So and, all they're doing and the bankers are going to misdirect them right into our, our faces. Yeah, they're going out on the street and they're saying, right, we're going to take now, we're going to take whatever we want, we're just going to thieve, we're going to loot, we're going to burn, and that's their answer. It's, it's, it's nothing. They don't realize what the banks have done to us. All, all they can see is the effect of it. All right, well, well said. Max, do you see his perspective? I know you say the police state train already left the station, but by the police standing down and allowing this, when this and, and, and then the media, that's the real kicker. They're branding it as political when it's not. Then they're now front-loading, as the caller said, and demonizing legitimate rebellion to tyranny. Well, to say that the, uh, the, the, the uh, folks on the street riding don't know the intricacies of the banking system, it reminds me of that Bob Dylan line. You don't have to be a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. In other words, three years ago, uh, the U.K. bailed out these banks, and to pay for the bailout, they imposed draconian austerity measures. Uh, as night follows day, when you confiscate wealth from a whole class of people, you can expect riots. Th this crime was committed three years ago. The crimes we're seeing in the last three days are the uh, symptoms, the effects of the major crime of three years ago that was never prosecuted. Prosecute the original crime. I agree, I agree, I agree. Prosecute Barclays Bank. Prosecute Fred the Shred over at Royal Bank of Scotland. Prosecute the real criminals three years ago. They've never been prosecuted. To, to point the finger at now a few kids burning a few buildings, uh, of course it's going to happen if you destroy their society and steal all their wealth. This is exactly I know, what's I know, happen. but see the genius of them triggering it like an oil field expert using dynamite to blow out an oil well that's on fire. Uh, you can see how they then use the crisis they create to get even more power. Patrick and Matthews, going ahead. back to callers from England with Max Kaiser. Then I'm going to get into the economy uh, that Max, again, has really called what was going to happen. Three years ago, banker bailout. He said two or three years from now, the austerity measures will start kicking in. The stimulus will end. Uh, you're going to see them hold the interest rates. You're going to see them totally rape the public. You're going to see gold. Uh, up to $2,000 by the end of the year. He was saying that at the start of the year. Now J.P. Morgan Chase came out uh, yesterday and said 2,500 an ounce by December or higher. The, the, and that's, that's the insiders telling you that. Uh, so uh, we'll be talking about that in a moment. But right now, Patrick in England, your view on the uh, hooligans. I mean, for me, it's, 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 it's really just the same type sports fans we see rioting in L.A., Chicago, New York, uh, Brazil, South Africa, black, white, doesn't matter. All the same disgusting, weird, thuggish sports culture um, that we just see all over the place uh, really expanding uh, where men's manhood now is, is uh, all about how spindly-necked and thug-like they are. Uh, but uh, what's your view on it? Hello, Alex. Uh, just a quick mention. Thank you for all your information that you're getting out to the public. Um, 
in England there's a there's a wide a wide sort of spectrum of people that do understand what's going on but it is the bankers that have orchestrated this it's very obvious uh, not to the thugs on the streets which I obviously totally condone but um, one thing that people may not be aware of on Saturday night after the uh, initial peaceful protest in London outside the police station there was a theater nearby that was actually showing a show that night by coincidence of uh, people being trapped in a theater because there was riots going on outside. I mean, this woman from uh, New York, she was involved with the theater. She came on the, uh, either Sky News or BBC, I forget which one, and said, wow, what a coincidence. Um, we know that the globalists like to take the mickey out of the people like that, but uh, I totally condemn the violence and the destruction that's going on, but it's just a strange coincidence. I like your thoughts on that. Well, we know they ran drills with the exact same targets being hit at the exact same time. Uh, on 7-7, uh, also 9-11. But if you go to prisonplanet.com, or we've got uh, multiple reporters on the ground in England, including Patrick Henningsen, who's been reporting for us, but Steve Watson in London, Paul Watson north of London. Police were ordered to stand down as London burned. Uh, continuing, uh, we are the infield army video of locals uh, chasing rioters in London. Uh, so folks are definitely, and that will short-circuit the globalist. If citizens start standing up against the looters, the globalists aren't going to be able to fully use this. In fact, look for government to try to block the citizens next from defending themselves. We've seen England and we've seen the UK arrest people who've defended themselves in their own homes. Uh, stocks tumble at open amid economic fears. Uh, continuing, there's reports that youths were offered money to start the riots. Uh, and and um, so that's some of the reports. Uh, we've uh, got there, uh, but that's my take on it. Uh, what's your take, Max Kaiser? These people have been financially oppressed. This is financial apartheid, and they have had their financial rights deprived from them. Somebody needs to communicate with these people uh, and to reach out to these people because they have a they have a, a, a right the right to grieve for grievance. They've been uh, basically put into a prison of financial tyranny, effectively, and there, it's like a prison riot. Uh, because it's completely, um, as again, using the apartheid example. You know, we need like a Nelson Mandela type figure to, save to stand us. up for the rights of these financially oppressed. They're, they go to the machine to get money, to get 10 quid, 10, 10 pounds, they're charged one pound. That, that's unconscionable. That's the worst well, of the but, 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 but Max, look, it'd be one thing if they went at the parliament or if they went at one of the palaces or when Brits spontaneously the attacked education. Camilla and they've Charles. Been, oh, fees in the UK now. Nobody can afford a proper education. Nobody can afford proper food. They're all being medicated. They're all being oppressed. And, and, you know, we're arguing about they're not eloquent enough in their speech for their rights. Well, they need representation. We need to represent well, them. Look, they uh, are look, Max, brothers. Max, a large portion of these people, I've said it over and over again, they're going to use the imported welfare immigrant populations who believe in gun control and socialism in every country, because that's what their paymasters tell them to believe, they're going to use them to riot to then crack down on everybody else. And there's no doubt that a lot of these people are still getting their free housing, their welfare checks. They just can't buy enough iPods, and they're looting stores for iPods and burning down family businesses. W what about the victims of, of, of their attacks, Max? That's my issue. They're all victims. The people who are on both sides of this flaming the riot are the victims of the looters and the, the city of London. And these people are being uh, Look, financially oppressed. Let me ask Again, this, Max. Every, what would have happened? What would have happened if the if the looters would have gone down to 10 Downing Street? Do you think there'd have been some real bullets being fired at them back? They don't have enough of uh, of wherewithal or or self awareness to pick through the proper actions to get their grievances heard. That's why we need to help them represent themselves. I don't know, they the know. starving Sir French knew where the government buildings were. Yeah, that's right. And it was all started by the same, for the same reason. The French introduced the assignat, which is a currency of the period, backed by collateralizing church property. The exact same scam that we saw in the UK and America today, collateralizing mortgages and creating a currency around that. And it bankrupted the country. And they revolted. Here you've got the U.K. government has collateralized property to, to back the U.K. pound, which is inherently worthless. 
And now people's purchasing power is collapsing, and they're flooding the market with more of these worthless assignat British pounds, and there's a riot. There's a revolution. It's happening all over well, the world. Well, here's what it's I want. different stages all over the world. It's different flavors all over the world. you got to give it the historical and global context. No, I hear you, but here's what I want. The same boat. You're in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. They're in the same boat. We're all being oppressed by Max, the same I agree with you. bankers. I agree with you, but at the same time, we should be able to then say this is not the way to do a revolution. We need to go with the 1776 model that I know that you admire. Uh, and so we need to push worldwide 1776, not worldwide 1789 French Revolution. Nobody is pushing anybody out of the banks uh, currently, okay? You're not doing it. I'm not doing it. Nobody's doing it. Obama's not doing it. Uh, David Cameron's not doing it. Nobody's pushing the corrupt bankers out of their offices today. Nobody, okay? And the result is riots. And until you get rid of the corrupt, plundering class in the city of London, expect more riots. That's the recipe. Now, it's now Iceland did take policy. over the banks. Iceland did take over the banks, though. So maybe it should be a 1776 Icelandic model. Iceland is a sterling example. They pushed back against the banks, and they prosecuted, but they're trying to prosecute bankers. Guess, guess where those bankers went for safe harbor, Alex, who escaped Iceland? They went to London. London of course. offers safe harbor to corrupt bankers all over the world. That's why the real estate market in the high end goes up in London, because they offer safe harbor for financial criminals from Iceland in particular who stole billions. No, that's where all the Russian oligarchs. The that's where all the Russian oligarchs went. I agree. That's where the Russian oligarchs are. That's where all the oligarchs are. They're in London, and they take all the because London is the hedge fund capital of the world and the money laundering capital of the world. By the way, did it's you know in the last two years almost all of the Israeli oligarchs have fled to the city of London within London? Right. Now, so now, tell me about the riots in Brixton. Of course the people are rioting, because their country is a sham. It's a shameful, despotic cesspool of money laundering. Well, Max, if, listen, if you think, of, hey, is a, is a, is a why don't you go to Brixton and lead them against the city of London? <laughs> I'll guarantee, I'll guarantee I you. I was in Cairo. I was in Beirut. I was I know. in New York. That's I why I said that. I've been on the front lines. I've been You're incredible. That's, I mean, I you are Beirut. George Washington. George, uh, George Washington, you're not listening to me, George Kaiser. I know that you thought that was sarcastic. I I'm saying, uh, I mean, y you're saying nobody's leading the charge. I I'm not saying you should. I'm saying it sounds like you're about to, uh, are you going to lead uh, us, George? Look, the scariest thing that for the British parliamentary system, the Brit politicians in Britain today, would be if there's a sudden groundswell of people saying these rioters have rights, you're infringing on their rights, they're not the problem, you're the problem. And then they go down and they say, we represent the rioters. They don't really can't articulate the problem because you've dumbed them down and medicated them so badly and deprived them of an education and turned them into basically intellectual eunuchs. We're here to represent them because you screwed them. That's what the people calling into your show today should be worried about and talking about. Not condemning their brothers and sisters across the street who have been slaughtered by financial apartheid. They should be going down. Uh, look, we're, it's more sophisticated than that. Life. George, George, hold on. It's more sophisticated than that. We recognize that they have helped trigger this to then demonize the legitimate rebellion against the city of London that the globalists and their actuaries know is coming, just like our report. It's here. Alex, it's here. It's not coming. It's here. It's here all in cities all over the world, and it's growing every single day, and it's one big global insurrection, and it's happening in cities everywhere. Well, I, you know what? I should, oh, okay, so somebody's going to come burn my house or burn our studios instead of instead of going after the city of London? Or I mean, I'm just saying that's, that's wrong. Yeah, but if nobody puts a, a line in the sand against the bankers, you and me and everyone else is going to be gobbled up by this inferno. All right, we're going to break. I think you've hit the nail on the head here, though. I, I think you really have crystallized it. The banker's plan is to implode society and sit offshore while they do it and then come in, come in and buy everything up for pennies on the dollar. It's either the bankers or us. We must get the fractional reserve fraudulent debt money system out of here. We must go back to constitutional money or we are facing a road warrior scenario. And I totally agree with Max on that front. I've got to get into the economy with him uh, as well. And I want to go to more callers in England. Straight in, in, in England. We're going to leave it at that. When calls from England, but we'll take more tomorrow. Max is going to stay a little bit later in the hour now because I really...
want to pick his brain uh, on uh, where he sees future trends going. But as Max keeps saying, and as I've been saying, and every other analyst we have on, this global banking cartel system is designed as a financial black hole to not create an economy or a society, to not empower through a credit system, but through a negative credit system that destroys everything in its path. And we're now entering the end game phase. When I'm sitting around at night with my wife going to sleep at midnight, I'm, I mean, I'm holding her hand and we are literally praying to God because I understand how dangerous this is. A depression now, a global collapse now, a sustained global collapse with the, with, with the way the public is today, decadent, doesn't know how to grow tomatoes, nothing is going to be hellish. And it's still not too late to turn it around. We'll talk about that with Max Kaiser in the next segment. In the short segment, Matthew and Ian. Uh, Matthew, Matthew just hung up as I was going to him. Ian in England. Ian, you're on the air. Uh, any questions or comments for Kaiser? Or what's your take on the situation going on in your country? Uh, hi, Alex. Um, just wanted to say hi to everybody in America and around the world. Um, just wanted to give you an update on uh, what's really going on in London. Yeah, it's calmed down. Um, I was driving around today in the city, uh, I'm a plumber, and um, I'm just cruising around, lots of police, heavy police presence, um, uh, it definitely is, looks like it's going into the police state. Uh, other than that, you know, things have calmed down, people are business as usual, uh, the sort of, uh, yesterday, I must say, you know, there was a lot of that sort of hype around it in central London, a lot of rumours flying around hysteria, I guess you could call it. Um, so it, it has been a pretty couple of intense days. You know, people are worried. And uh, one of the most worrying things for me was today I was listening to the BBC uh, London radio and uh, they're talking about um, uh, like what they had an in Vigilantes, you know, they're, going, they're making a big sort of thing about this vigilante um, uprising that we're having up in Enfield. And uh, they're talking about, oh, should uh, the government empower people and give them uh, powers of arrest and stuff like that. I was like, well, you know, this sounds like a sort of Hitler youth brigade system that we're getting set into. There, 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 no, no one is above the law. Well, here's know? the deal, though. Uh, Under common law, you have citizens' arrest. That's why the cops have arrest. They're only organized under the citizens' pleasure to do the work for us because we've got other things to do. And, but yes, yes, citizens' brigades can turn into a Hitler Jugend or it can turn into a Sons of Liberty. Uh, it depends. But I mean, if you've got citizens spying on people's speech, which government has set up, it's wrong. But if you have citizens, when they see somebody trying to set fire to a building, uh, beating them upside the head with a baseball bat or a baton, that is, that is common sense. Uh, the difference is the government, who, who are run by the banks, is organizing people to basically be a spy grid. I've, they've already done this in England. Instead of the people should be getting together and marching on the city of London, Max Kaiser. Here's a great way for people to get together and take down a major institution that is completely culpable in these riots. They should pick a day in September, let's say September 1st, and organize a countrywide boycott and do not pay their BBC license fee. Take down the BBC for unconscionably setting up these riots by not reporting on the banker scandals for 10 years, for having guys like Jeremy Paxman on every night throwing softballs to the banking establishment, and by supporting the Bank of England and their atrocious confiscation of wealth. Pick a day, to, uh, countrywide, don't pay your license fee, it's a form of civil disobedience, take down a major institution, and then go from there. And, and folks, if you don't understand how the banks are confiscating your wealth, they're devaluing every major currency on earth. They're devaluing every currency with the Swiss franc because they don't control it. They are devaluing these. They are cheating you. They are robbing you, and they're making the short-term profit. Uh, anything else, caller? Well, Alex, let me, let me, yeah. Was, let, me just, um, let, me just get, let me follow up on that and just say that I have made that suggestion to people in prison before. And they always come back to me and say, yeah, but it's against the law not to pay your license fee. I'm saying, yeah, no kidding. It's against the law to have your wealth stolen as too. But unless you're willing to go to the front line and do something...
You know, this is the easiest form of civil disobedience you could possibly Well, Max, imagine. I'm going to have you expand on after the break. We'll get that one comment from Ian. Then we'll look, and then that's it for callers. Uh, from England, we appreciate all of you calling, but Ian will be able to finish up. Then I want to get into some of the technicals with Max folks training. in England. They pretty much concur with my analysis. Uh, the problem is, as I said, they're going to use this to demonize um, legitimate protest demonstrations. And you do have a criminal, illegitimate government in England and the U.S. And so I've always said that I don't think it's a good idea to get violent at this point, to keep trying to fix things peacefully. But you can't really criticize people who do uh, basically start resisting the government because it is illegitimate. But they've, 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 they've craftily set up a control grid ahead of this takedown program. So, Max Kaiser, how do you counter that? They've, they've already set up the fake narratives that anybody resisting them is evil, just like Hitler did. And uh, the general public doesn't understand what the megabanks are doing, this global domination program. So how do we educate them? Well, I, I gave a great idea for a civil disobedience campaign mobilizing the masses to shut down the BBC by not paying the license fee. That would swing the balance of power back to the people. Suddenly the people have something that they can use as leverage against a major institution. And let me just uh, point out something here. You know, Alex, a few months ago, I introduced you to Nomi Prinz, a former uh, Goldman Sachs partner, excellent guest. You've had her on our show a few times. She's brilliant. I want to ask you to also consider William K. Black or Bill Black, I mean, you may have had him on your show if you, if you haven't had him on your show. He's the guy who put a thousand bankers in jail during the SNL crisis. He's a brilliant speaker. He, he's available. You got to get him on your show. He can explain these things. No, no, no. He's in Fall of the Republic. Uh, he's in the same film that you're in, uh, Max. And <laughs> okay. Well, has he been on the show lately? Uh, no, we need to get him back on. The, the last few times I just we had him on my show, and the guy is, he put a thousand bankers in jail. He's, he knows exactly what to do. He knows who to call and what, what he, the, the entire history. No, he has said stories. that the theft we're seeing is an order of magnitude above any grand larceny ever. And he said it will lead to a total, complete collapse a year and a half ago in Fall of the Republic. And so, and so for folks that are tuning in, this is total depression, total collapse, looting and war in the streets, welfare mobs going crazy, unless we reverse what the bankers have done. So, so, so break down what they've done. We're now at the precipice, where we go from here, if their program of global takeover is not reversed, Max. Well, you're, you're asking me the kind of how, how it happens. I mean, the bigger narrative in terms of the device used. I mean, I can tell you that in, in the absence of a true standard for your money, like a gold standard, if you go to an interest rate scheme to determine the value of your money, you set up a dynamic where, and we see this played out in the economy today, two forces are at war with each other. One the people who want interest rates to be high, these are the people who have working and saving, and they want a good rate of return on their money. And then there are people who want interest rates near zero because they want to be very cheap for them to borrow because they use the borrowed money to speculate. And when they make a losing bet, they get bailed out, and they use it. Okay, so that's the tension. Now, what's happened over the past 10 to 15 years is that the people who have been borrowing and speculating and getting bailed out have used their profits to influence government to keep interest rates low and to deregulate markets to make it easier for them to borrow and speculate. They now control 50 to 60 percent of the U.S. economy, depending on how you calculate the way various corporations use cash and derivatives to beef up their profits, beef up their broad bottom line. So they control the U.S. economy, and it's all around this lever of interest rates. The, the, the only balance to return to the U.S. economy will come if interest rates are higher and people start to get return on their savings and you start to get capital. You don't have capitalism without capital. You don't have capital without savings, and you can't have savings without higher interest rates. And that's as clear as the nose on your face. But the lobbying interest of the Wall Street is so strong, they are not allowing interest rates to rise above zero. And that is a financial oppression. It's creating this financial apartheid because it's creating a permanent underclass of people who never escape poverty and degradation and joblessness because the economy itself only serves those who are in the, in the business of speculating, borrowing, and getting bailed out. And so going forward, 
the, the need for interest rates to be higher is paramount. Now, you'll hear people say that, well, that'll crash the economy. That'll crash real estate. That'll crash things. It will in the short term like it did in Iceland. But <laughs> you have the basis upon which to rebuild a new economy that has real jobs and not a financial casino economy that has fake jobs. It's going to be painful, but it, oh, you have that pain, you have it for a short, shorter period of time, and you keep your sovereignty. The problem with this system is that it's an easy ride for some, and we all lose our sovereignty. It certainly is. Won't the bankers destroy themselves in the end, the banksters, because no, no amount of police state is going to allow them to, to, in the end, get away with their plan because it destroys everything. They're cutting cops pay all over the world. They're laying police off. They're laying bureaucrats off. So they're even laying off many of their own enforcers um, that are needed to keep the people in line while they're raped by the bankers. So okay. at a certain okay. point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so at a certain point, we're going to be sending military expeditionary forces out like Nazi hunters to bring these bankers back. Because, because they have lost all perception of risk. When you have a group of people who never get penalized for any of their bad behavior, they just keep getting rewarded for their bad behavior, they lose all perspective on risk. When you say, aren't they going to just hurt themselves in the end? Yes, they are. But they themselves can't comprehend it because they never make a mistake. They believe, as Blankstein said it, the Goldman Sachs, they're doing God's work. They really have a God complex in that they believe that everything they touch turns to gold. And in some cases, literally now, of course, they're buying gold like crazy, and you're seeing the price hitting new all-time highs. But when you don't have a society that penalizes bad behavior, you have this warped sense of risk, and these people are kamikaze suicide bankers, as I call them, because they have no conception of the risks they're taking for themselves because there's nothing in society to penalize them for their risky behavior. Well, well said, Max. Um, so what's the time frame here? Uh, if, if this program is not reversed, if they explain to a new listener out there, why is it bad that they've announced that for another two plus years, they're going to keep interest rates at zero? Uh, why did that cause the dollar uh, to accelerate its drop? Why did that push not just uh, gold and silver up, but other commodities like uh, crude oil, sugar? Explain to people how the interest rates being kept at zero and how the free money is being given to the central banks and no one else in a skewed system where the zero percent interest rates only for them. Explain to people how that's creating hyperinflation. Well, that's exactly what I just you know went went over. In other words, uh, when you have uh, the criminals, the borrowers, the speculators, when they account for fifty or sixty percent of the economy, you need to wash them out. You need to get rid of them. And the way that it, this is done is by raising interest rates. It's, it's a classical notion of the job of the Fed Reserve Chairman is when the party gets too wild, they take away the punch bowl. And they do this by raising interest rates. Paul Volcker did this in the 70s. He took interest rates up to 16%, 17%. It caused a massive um, recession for two or three years, but it laid the groundwork for the boom of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And this is what's needed periodically to wash out the, the speculators and the dead wood and the non-performing uh, agents like these banks on Wall Street. But the Fed, obviously, instead of raising rates as they should to get rid of the bad apples, the, the dead wood, they're lowering interest rates. They're encouraging the speculation. They're encouraging the bad behavior. Why? Because um, they enjoy the free money that they're getting. They've been co-opted by Wall Street. And Obama's administration is offering no pushback against this. Tim Geithner is um, Obama's man on Wall Street, and he's telling Obama lies every single day. Obama is essentially financially illiterate. He doesn't know the difference between a stock and a bond. He relies totally on Geithner, who's in the pocket of Wall Street. And he's engineering this 0% interest rate policy, or ZERP, as it's called, because it benefits the same few guys over and over and over again, and the economy is being gutted. Exactly. So They're the only ones that get the zero or negative interest rate and then loan it to people out there for 30% or, or higher. Max, 7 o'clock tonight, PrisonPlanet.tv. We're going to have a special report breaking down uh, the news on this. 
and I really appreciate you spending time with us on the radio. Folks can find out about all things Kaiser at MaxKaiser.com. Thank you for spending time with us. Anytime. All right, there goes Max Kaiser. I